How much do you know about the infinite cosmos surrounding you? Today is May 9th, 2010, 1010 p.m. As I look up at the vast sweep of starry night, I tend to assume what I've been taught is true, that our entire universe sprang into being from a singular infant particle that learned, somehow, to self-replicate. Now, fast forward 13.75 billion years, roughly, and here I am on a planet called Earth, talking to you. The process I just described is often called the Big Bang Theory, and most respectable citizens accept this as a no-brainer concerning how you, me, and the cosmos itself came into being. However, did you know there is a competing explanation? It is called the Steady State Theory. Come with me as I interview two of the universe's top astrophysicists as they debate the expanding and contracting merits of each of these theories. Dr. Steinhauser, thank you for allowing me into your classroom. This is not a classroom. Oh god, what's that? It's a particle accelerator. Tell me, Doctor, how exactly does the Big Bang Theory differ from its rival, the steady state model? One is truth, and the other is bunk. Which one is bunk? The steady state model has been a withering corpse since 1965. Yes. Its proponent, Fred Hoyle, claims the universe never exploded into being. Yes. That the universe has essentially always appeared the same, now and forever. Yes. And what are the objections to such a model? Listen, are you at all educated on the fundamentals of astrophysics? I've read some entries in the Charlie Brown Encyclopedia. I see. Cosmic background radiation stretches all across space at a temperature just Five Kelvins above absolute zero. What's a Kelvin? It's not important. Right. The point is, the universe has been steadily cooling as if in the aftermath of a great explosion. Now, we call that explosion the Big Bang, which resulted from the hatching of a cosmic egg filled with infinite density and high energy radiation. Dr. Easterbrook is not so sure about this cosmic egg business. He is one of the last soldiers in the upward battle to prove the steady state model, a model where direction, upward or otherwise, is non-existent. You've been talking to Steinhauser, have you? Yes. Who are those dancers in your backyard? A tribe which has remained unchanged since time immemorial. I intend to write the definitive history on their unchangeability. Tell me, Dr. Easterbrook, why is there so much unrelenting resistance to the steady state theory? People want to feel precious, and astronomers are no exception. But you don't want to feel precious. I don't want anyone to feel precious. Right. I mean, why put that strain on yourself? Right. The Big Bang apologists want to believe we are at the center of a universe which is expanding all around us, the result of an oh-so-convenient cosmic explosion. I once read that the ancient Hindus had a Big Bang creation theory of their own, and... Are you going to listen to Hindus and amateur astrophysicists? Or are you going to give logic and mathematical precision its due? I don't know. That's right. You don't know. And neither does Steinhauser or any of the other apologists. For example, did you know that when the Big Bang Theory was first formulated, that the very theory claimed the universe was two billion years old? So what? So what, he says. Son, our solar system is older than two billion years. Oh. And those fools tried covering their tracks by claiming they mismeasured the distance in between galaxies. When I heard that, I thought to myself, the bastards. What about cosmic background radiation that has shown evidence of a post-explosion cooling? That is simply the interplay between interstellar radiation and iron. Iron? Iron. But where does the iron come from? It comes from the stars. In fact, the very iron in your blood used to be in a star. I then return to Dr. Steinhauser's classroom to tell her of my conversion from Big Bang apologist to steady state champion. Iron? Yes. He said the universe is five Kelvins because of iron? Yes. The Big Bang is not philosophy. The universe is a place where experiments can be conducted and results are yielded. Yeah, whatever. Come here. Let me show you something. Oh god, I forgot about that thing. It's just a particle accelerator. Why is it bouncing like that? Just put your hand inside this little compartment. 
The thing won't stay still. Just put your hand inside. All right. It's quite safe, really. Now, this machine will extract a few of the quarks from your hand and heat them to the approximate temperature of the original Big Bang explosion. Ah, 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 ah. Now, those quarks will be super cool to the equivalent of 13.75 billion years worth of standard cooling. You will then see that the radiation has dropped in temperature to about 5 Kelvin. Uh, sir? Sir? I later awakened to a flurry of scientists, one of whom told me that the evidence is in, and it now seems as if the universe will go on expanding forever, whereas before it was assumed it would one day collapse on itself and contract backwards into the quantum soup. So, it would seem, both theories are correct and compatible. But let me say just one thing. If you ever find yourself being asked to give up the quarks inside your body, don't walk, but run to the nearest exit.